In this video, we're going to talk about the state pattern as part of our programming design patterns. This pattern is especially useful if you start to get into more complex setups inside of your games. So anything where you have an object that needs to change its behavior based on game parameters, then you may wanna consider this pattern. And a common one is like the overall flow of your game. So let's say your overall game, are you in the menu state, are you in the level state, are you in the waiting for the race to start state. Anytime you have states inside of your game, you may want to consider this pattern. And there's lots of different permutations of this pattern. Like you could there you could use simple um, switch statements or just doing if blocks to check if it's if a Boolean is true. To the more complex examples that we'll go into where we're using a class-based state pattern. So anyways, if you have an object that changes its behavior at different points in the game, then you probably want to use this, this particular pattern. So as a quick overview of what the state pattern looks like from a really high level, we're going to have a class that is going to function as a state machine. Now, if you've never used or heard of a state machine before, think of this as the motor that, um, that drives the state changes and keeps track of which state is the current state. So inside of our state machine, we'll have a series of states and at any point in time, we want to know what the current state is. And at various conditions, we may want to change to a different state. The changing is going to be handled in the different states. But, you know, as an example, if this were on the player, we may have a player running, player idle state, player attacking state or whatever. And each of these could show a different animation, play a sound effect, lock out input, whatever you want to do here is fine. And it's very modular. You can you can give almost anything different states, like bosses that have that change their attack pattern after a certain um, health percentage and so forth. The key components are that we can change our state, we have a list of states, and we can track whatever the current state is. And then each of our states have its own isolated behavior. So to look at this in a more um, code level, we are going to have two base classes that are going to do most of the heavy lifting inside of our example. And I will tell you the state pattern is one of the more complex ones to explain, especially when you try to implement it into an, an example. So um, understanding the high level is going to be really, really important here once we get into the code. You could technically make a state a base class as well, but um, you, know, you could do it either an interface or a base class. I'm gonna show you with an, inter with an interface just to make the behavior really clear of what's happening. So we're going to have an I state and anything that is a type of state will implement this interface. And in order to be an I state, it needs to implement an enter, an exit, and a tick. Now we're just using the word tick. Um, you could think of that if you know inside of Unity as the update method but it's happening every single game loop. Like every, as often as we can, we're gonna hit the tick and it's gonna be over time. Our state machine will handle, our base class in our state machine will handle changing state and it'll keep track of whatever the current I state is. And this will be the same no matter what state machine we have. And on top of this, we're gonna have our concrete implementations. So let's say if we wanted to make a state machine on the player, we would have the player state machine, and it would inherit from state machine. And then on the player state machine, we would have walking state, we'd have idle state, we'd have attacking state, and these are specific to the player. So all of these together know about each other and they belong to each other. And then we're just using the state machine, the base class to control how we're changing and all the functionality behind there but the specifics of what happens inside of each state will be controlled by um, enter, exit, and tick. Now remember, because we can only be in one state at a time, uh, if we're idle, we're only doing the behavior on this one. If we are attacking, we're only doing the behavior on this one and so forth. So only one state can be active at a time. Now we're gonna move into showing the diagram of the example we're gonna look at. So in our example, we're going to create I'm calling it a search bot, but it's basically a little object that has a few different states. We're gonna click, it's going to move towards the position, and then it's gonna find the thing there, and it's going to wait for another click. In order to implement this, we're going to define what states we need our search bot to have. And in this case, I'm gonna have an idle, which is waiting for 
a click. We're gonna have search, which is moving towards a target. And we're going to have found, which is it found the target. And you could you know, increase the score, you could do some animations and whatever it is. As part of our search bot, we are going to create a search bot state machine and it's going to inherit from our state machine base. And this is never gonna change. We could have several different state machines inherit from state machine. And our search bot state machine is going to, to have a series of I states. And in this case, it's gonna be three. We're gonna have an idle, a search, and a found. And because these are all type of I state, we know that each one can call enter, exit, and tick. And so at any point in time, our bot will be in one of these three and will behave in the scene appropriately. Now you can already imagine how this is useful as opposed to having giant if blocks of if Boolean is searching, do this stuff. If Boolean is listening for input, whatever. We don't wanna worry about that. We want to try and break out our behavior into different classes to keep everything compartmentalized and more separated. And um, it's just a better way to work. It's, it's more modular and it's much easier to add future states without messing with the base code. So now we're going to look at an example of our state pattern inside of Unity. So let's see what we have here. If we hit play, we have our search bot and he has three different states. And if I click my mouse, it will set a target. So I'm gonna do this. So he's in idle right now. Here, a sound effect finds it, goes back to idle. So we have idle, we have searching, and then once it reaches a target, we have found. And then it goes, waits and then goes back to idle. So let's look at how this is put together. On a robot, search bot, right here, we have a search bot. I'm using SM for state machine just because it gets very long uh, when you start using the, the term state machine. Search bot SM, and it has a reference to the level controller. Let's just talk briefly about that. Not part of the pattern, so I'm not gonna spend too long here, but the target assigner just handles the, the targeting part, not everything apart from the um, search bot. So it gets a point from the camera and the floor, it creates a little target there and it assigns it and sends out a, if you've seen the observer pattern video, it sends out a event for new target acquired and then the search bot's gonna receive that event and respond to it. And so inside of update, we're just testing if the, if the left mouse button was clicked, then we want to get a, get a new hit, store, figure out where the target is, visualize it, and then store it and send out the event notification. So anyways, that, not part of the pattern, but that's what that does. I'm gonna close all the other scripts. So now let's look at how our state machine is put together. These two scripts are reusable. You can take them and put them in to a brand new project and um, inherit from them and everything should be fine, which is a great way to work. You'll see that in my I state, I've added one more implementation here. And this is if you're using anything with physics. I found it helpful to emulate the fixed update as well inside of Unity. I'd consider it to be optional, but if you are planning on doing something with rigid bodies or physics, it's best practice to do that in fixed update. So um, that's gonna look a little bit different, but not crucial to the pattern. So anything that is a type of I state is going to need to implement these four methods. And then inside of our state machine base, so mono behavior. So remember we had our search bot script uh, state machine attached to the game object right here. And inside of our state machine base, we are keeping track of the current state. I'm also keeping track of the previous state just because it's helpful in some scenarios. And then we have a lot of code that is basically handling the functionality of changing to a new state, reverting a state, and then this is a helper function for changing the state. This is the public accessible one. And then we're checking to make sure that it's not the same or it's not currently transitioning. And then um, we do the code. So the code's going to look like, uh, like this, kind of long, but it's to catch some uh, error checking and some other things. When we change our states, we are calling the exit from whatever state we're currently in, making sure we call exit from the previous state. We are switching the state and then we're calling enter and the new state. And we can 
call these generically because we know that current state is a type of I state and then all of our states will be a type of I state. So we know that they all have enter and exit. Okay, and then inside of update, we're taking the current state and calling whatever whatever is in its tick. And inside of fixed update, we're calling whatever is inside of its fixed tick. So this is our base class, and this is all pretty generic because we haven't defined any specific states, just the hookups for types of state. So now let's look at our search bot. If we go to our search bot and we open up our search bot here, you can see that we've defined a few states. So we've created a search bot idle state, a search bot search state, and a search bot found state. I'm doing these as properties here. Um, you could do them as just standard variables if you want. You could do these as standard fields if you want. Um, kind of up to you, but this is the pattern that I like. Then we're getting things that might be important inside of the serialized field through our inspector. So this would be the stuff right here. And then inside of awake, so the first thing that we want to happen is we're going to create each of our states. So these are C-sharp objects in this case, which means that we need to create them somewhere. And if we create them somewhere and they're C-sharp, so they're not mono behavior, then we can pass things into a constructor, which is very helpful. So our idle, we're gonna create a new idle state. We'll look at that in a second. Our search is going to create a new search state. We'll look at that in a second as well. And then our found state. And then the last important thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we set the starting state. So super crucial to getting a state machine working. Inside of start, we are going to change state to set to idle as its default current first state. Yeah, the, the important parts are that we're keeping, we're holding on to the states here. We are creating the states in awake as the first thing. We are receiving when the target changes here. And we are changing to idle as our first state. And because this is inheriting from state machine mono behavior, we get all of this functionality. So um, if we want to change our states, we're just going to call searchbot dot uh, change state, and then we can choose one of these states to change to. Okay, let's look at the different states and see exactly how we we have this implemented. So again, we've created them, and we've set our default to idle. But past that, we don't really know what the behavior is like inside of the states. So I have this folder, search bot states, and we have them organized like this. Let's go to our idle. There's actually several different ways to do a state machine. And one way you might see is to see states attached as mono behavior scripts. And there are pros and cons to doing that. In my case, I'm just gonna keep the states as simple C sharp classes and not use mono behavior. But what that means is that I need to be a lot more specific in how I'm passing around my references. And I think I mentioned this in a previous video, but if you are not using mono behavior, it is best practice to pass in any required references through the constructor. It's gonna be public, the same name, and that's gonna be the constructor. And so whenever we create a search bot idle state, we need to give it this information then we're going to hold on to this information with these fields inside of the class. And that way we can use it whenever we want. So we're gonna create the state, we're gonna hold on to it. Inside of the search bot state machine right here, when we create the search bot idle, we're passing in this, which is this instance of search bot state machine. We're passing that in so that we have a reference to it so that we can call change state because we will need to change state at some point. So anyways, uh, we pass in all the references we need. This could be anything, it could be sound effects, it could be the target, it could be whatever. Um, at this point, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do inside the state, you would want to pass in, you'd want to hang on to it, and then you'd want to use it whenever you need it. On enter, we are changing the visuals, and we have access to you know, some of these mesh renders and things. That's why the eye color changes. And this, we're using the observer pattern, which works really well with the state machine pattern. And we're saying whenever the event happens of new target acquired, we want to run this method. And this method says, if I'm in idle and the new target acquired event gets invoked, I want to change state to be searching because we have a new target. And when I'm exiting the state, I, I wanna stop listening to the new target acquired because 
I'm no longer in the state. I, I don't wanna leave my hanging reference here. I wanna make sure I unsubscribe to anything that I have subscribed to. And then inside of tick and fixed tick, we're not really doing anything. So I'm just gonna leave those empty. But yeah, just, just to summarize, you do your constructor, start listening to events inside of enter and you set your defaults. And then you make sure to undo everything that you did inside of enter if it's relevant, like get it back to the default state. That's idle. And the other two are gonna be very similar. So I'll move through them just a little bit more quickly, but you will have search state, which we are, you know, we moved into. Again, you'll have your constructor. You'll take in all the references you need. In this case, in order to move the object, we need a rigid body. So we're gonna pass that in as well, hold on to it. Enter, we're gonna change some visuals. Exit, we're gonna change the visuals back. And inside of fixed tick, because we're using a rigid body, we need to do that with fixed update and the um, physics system. We are testing the distance from between this and the target destination. And if we're close enough, then we change state to we found it. Otherwise, we're not close enough. We need to continue rotating towards it and moving towards it. So we have rotate towards target. It's code to do that and move towards target. That's code to do that. That is the pattern. I mean, same thing with found state. The difference with found state is because since we're not using a mono behavior, we can't simply do coroutines. So all I'm doing inside of this one is I'm showing you how you can do a over time, like an elapsed time. And so inside of our constructor, we're taking in a few references. Inside of our enter, we are playing a sound effect, we are changing visuals, and we are starting a timer. Now the start timer is just going to um, activate, like flag the Boolean and start at zero. And then inside of tick, we are saying increment the timer using time.delta time. And if the elapsed time has surpassed whatever the delay duration is, in this case, 1.5 seconds, then we wanna stop and we wanna change state. Anyways, states can be very confusing and kind of weird to work with, but once, once you get, get it down, you can isolate different parts of your behavior on any object you want into these various states. And it makes it very, very easy to troubleshoot makes it very easy to add new states. Like what if we wanted a, you know, a startup state or a halfway to target state, we wanna move faster or something. Or if we're close enough, we want to ping the mini map. We can add other states to our object very easily rather than have it all in one big giant class. Very difficult to upkeep and very difficult to manage. But by breaking it out into separate states, we can further define our game in smaller increments. You could also imagine if we were building like a turn-based game, you would want the different phases of your game, like when you're selecting a character, you'd want that to be a state. When you are um, choosing your ability, you'd want that to be a state. When the character's attacking, you may want that to be a state and so forth. So anyways, just to bring this all together, our search bot has a state machine on it. We're defining states inside of the search bot and we are switching inside of those states whenever certain things happen. So instead of idle, whenever we get a new target, we are switching to the find the target state. And uh, and then whenever we get close enough and we're moving the object, whenever we get close enough, then we switch to the found state. and then we wait and whatever. So anyways, that's that's a real brief look at state machines. They're super, super useful, especially for games where we do a lot of, we wanna respond to a lot of conditional type of checks at runtime. This is just a state machine on the search bot. You could have a state machine to control the flow of your game. You could have a state machine on enemies, on, uh, on your UI. You can really use them in a lot of different places. And it's a very, very handy pattern to get used to using.